So we're here at the, the Foreign Development Commonwealth Office, right in the heart of Westminster, the heart of politics in the UK. And Mark Neville's launched uh, an exhibition, or, or he's put actively six works that um, speak to the, the, the trauma and the conflict of, of the war in Ukraine. Not just now, not just in the last year, but what has been happening there and unfolding there for the last six years. Mark's project Stop Tanks with Books began as a, a book. Mark made the book over a period of six years and then combined his own images with short stories, ethnographic research, and a call to action. He then sent out 750 copies to a targeted audience, politicians, policymakers, the super rich, media, celebrities, all in order to garner support for Ukraine's fight for independence before the war ever started. His aim was to weaponize the photo book form. And every single person that comes here for a meeting with a politician, every single ambassador is confronted with the real human cost of war. This is art at its best. How was that? Well, it was uh, quite a powerful experience. You know, I just arrived in the UK from Ukraine like yesterday and uh, straight to the uh, Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office and the meeting and talking with Sir Philip Martin, who's the permanent undersecretary about to Ukraine, about their support for Ukraine and about this exhibition here and what it means to them and how they're trying to weaponize it as well. You know, they really understand the power, I think, of art. Wow, it's really amazing to see this for the first time, these images that I've taken in, in Ukraine over the past six years. I mean, uh, all this work was printed, framed in London whilst I've been in Kiev, in Ukraine. Uh, working on setting up this charity and delivering aid to, on the front line, basically. So, first this exhibition was at the V&A, wasn't it? Yeah. They opened it miraculously quickly in April. So quick you couldn't get there. Unbelievable, yeah. So I never saw this work at the V&A, very so, sadly. But what's it like seeing it at, I mean, it's larger than life. It's, it's very powerful, it's very powerful. All the images are kind of visible almost at once, aren't they? Yeah. But they're not on a kind of parade wall are they they're kind of architecturally quite strong here this is a remarkable image i mean all your photographs of kids are uh they're uh, the only word i could use they're bizarre because every child that you photograph looks older than they should tell me about how you happened upon this composition um this was shot in 2017 so i was working in kiev lavra church a big orthodox church in the center of kiev and um, I met these kids as part of the choir. They were actually displaced from Donbass and they'd be more or less accepted, taken into the church and um, here they're wearing choir uniforms. But I was really impressed by this space, in fact, that they're occupying, which is um, a shop in the church. It's such a big shop, it actually sells church spires to other shops. Um, and they're on pallets, so you can come in and choose the spire for your church. But it gives this kind of disorientating sense of space, because of course we're used to seeing spires in the background, not in the midground. So it's got a sense in which, you know, religion itself has been displaced, and these kids are also displaced. And when you say displaced, though, this is part of the h how many million of people? Yeah, well, by 2017, when I took this picture, something like 2.5 2 million people had already been displaced by the war at that point. So it was one of the largest displacements of people through conflict taking place anywhere on the planet at the time. But for some reason, it really wasn't being discussed. You know, there was no sense in which uh, the West was really paying attention until the, the second invasion in 2022. And I saw the war coming, which is why I made the book. I could see it coming in 2015 when I visited Ukraine for the first time. And if I saw it coming, and I'm just a, an artist, I'm not a military strategist, I'm not a political analyst, you know, if I saw it coming very, very clearly that there would be a further full-blown invasion any time, then other people must have seen it coming as well in the West and just decided they couldn't or wouldn't do anything about it. So I think, you know, and as we know, this war's had a massive impact globally, let alone on the poor people of Ukraine, um, we should have acted sooner, to be honest. We should have done more sooner. 
All the signs were there. All the signs were there. In the space between the v &A show launching and the foreign office taking this work, we actually have discovered that, um, that, that the goat farmer that's pictured here, that he's actually, he's, he's died. And this is a man who was held by Russians for years and tortured, and his leg had, was cut off. Um, Mark stayed with him for a, a period of time, and actually he nursed Mark back to, to health. Mark had a horrible sort of chest infection when they met, and, and he took him in, and, um, and I think they had a real, you know, a real, real connection. And now this man is, he's gone, he, he was killed um, when the war broke out. And, and Mark's obviously having to confront that over and over. But where he takes solace, and, and we've talked about this, is that the work is here. It's very emotional for me to see these works because they have a kind of mission, you know, for me, which was to um, combat compassion fatigue in the West and kind of make, try and make the West feel something again for Ukraine because, of course, it's not possible to sustain compassion for another country going through war for a very, very long time. You've got to actively work at it. What we're trying to do here at the Foreign Office is actually um, re-engage people with the urgency. You know, the war's not over. People are still dying. People are still losing their houses. People are still being displaced. And there's a desperate, urgent need for sustained support, both military, militarily and also in terms of humanitarian aid. And the war isn't over. You know, we're very confident. We know we're going to win, but the war certainly isn't over. And it's really important that people in the West realise that. So it's, it's my job, I feel. You know, I live in Ukraine. I love Ukraine to make work and to place it in resonant contexts yeah. like the Foreign Office, right. where it can not, really have an impact. Not a museum. Not a museum. Or where, not only a museum. Or a newspaper, but where it can really have impact on key stakeholders. And I really salute and applaud the Foreign Office, the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office for their support and their support for Ukraine. You know, everywhere I travel in Ukraine, people come up to me and say, thank you. And it's because I'm British, you know, and I go through so many checkpoints along the front line when I'm delivering aid and I have my passport checked, and as soon as people see I'm British, they're grateful. And that's really, you know, that's very moving, actually. And it's an indication of the, the robust commitment of the UK, um, which is kind of unique amongst the larger Western nations, how quick they were to support Ukraine, mm -hmm. comparatively speaking, and how substantially they supported Ukraine. And that's, you know, that's exceptional. It was not over and the humanitarian aid, the military aid, it's not just a question of, oh, we can deliver some guns and that's it. No, you know, and really it's Ukrainians who are laying down their lives to defend Western freedoms at the moment. So if they're paying with their lives, then the very least we can do is actually help them defeat Putin. Because if he was to be successful, it won't stop at Ukraine. It will go on and it will go on and go on. In my mind, great art has something to say. And if you think about the art that, you know, that, that stays in public consciousness, it, it has a political agenda. Think Goya's Horrors of War. Think Picasso's Guernica. Um, think about Louise Bourgeois's Cell or even Tracy Emmons' Everyone I Ever Slept With. They were political statements. Subtle in some ways, but they hit you over the head with it too. I mean, even if you think about Turner and, and his, you know, he, he's been down in history as one of the great landscape painters, but actually he had a whole bunch of political work that, that was heartbreaking to look at. Slaves being thrown off ships, wives digging through corpses at Waterloo. I mean, it, really, really hard to look at. And so the, this work ultimately helps us understand the very, very human cost of this war.